Nerfcast! Uh, Space Hulk is the game. Space Hulk is the name. I will tell you, it took a little bit of brute force to get the top of this box. I um, feel the very it's a heavy ass box, by the way. Um, if you feel like you pay too much for your copy of Space Hulk, you're wrong. Um, you did it because there's a lot of shit in there. But Space Hulk is a game that um, we're going to talk about this episode from Games Workshop. It is a very well-known property by itself, not just part of the 40K universe, but how many video games of Space Hulk has there been? At least four, I think. Yeah. Um, and they do the Doom style first person, you know, kind of thing with that, but that they've done since PlayStation 1, PC probably was the first one. Uh, I had it on the Panasonic 3DO. Mm, 3DO, I remember that one. So on the tabletop, what? The latest video game is a uh, top-down turn-based. It's not the oh, first person. Oh, okay. What what platforms are, are that, is that one on? I think it's PC. But okay. I'm not sure. So Space Hulk, I remember way early on that it existed because this was an era. We'll call it Mike's era, for lack of a better term. The era when Games Workshop wasn't known as the Warhammer Company. They were known as just game company. You know, a white dwarf, maybe that was a little before, whereas white dwarf had other articles. None. But at this time, though, games workshop, because I remember going to like, you know, like I'm probably 13 and Dean's 23, and he's showing me all these games. And they're all from Games Workshop, but they're all board games. And Space Hulk was one of those. So I think the first one came out in 89. And it was, I don't believe I ever played the first one. I think the cardboard was pretty weak. It was probably like White Dwarf. I hear some tiles or something. Um, I think the first real one I played was second edition. And from what I understand, that was a pretty big leap from the first edition to second edition. Mike, did you ever play that first one? No. Okay. Um, the, the, the first edition got super complicated because they kept adding more and more stuff to it. And then the second edition was kind of the thin down, dumbed down That's version. Right. First edition had supplements, mm. right? First edition had like Deathwing and something else and yeah. something else. They were these add-on games and never played any of it. The Terminators were terrible, the models back then. Yeah, yeah. As expected. When you got to the second edition, it brought it up to speed with where they were at with 40K at the time. And I believe that was 97-ish? I think it was about seven or eight years, 96, 97, I'm going to guess, probably when GW was doing the second edition 40K uh, uh, into third edition 40K, which was they talked about in our 40K episode, was the biggest change in their game since seven to eight, or before seven to eight. So second edition Space Hulk, I played, and I remember really getting into it, liking it a lot. Did you guys play that one? I did. You did? Um, I do remember that, you know, when you're playing it, it was very much a, like a board game, which we'll talk about where this all fits in. Um, it didn't, I, while we played it a good amount, it kind of quickly for me just became just a game of nostalgia. It was on a shelf, but then we didn't play a lot after that. We were playing other games. Um, did you find that extreme or did you really play it, uh, you know, 20 times? Um, I mean, whenever we got it out, we would play it multiple times in one okay. sitting, for sure. And everyone was always excited about getting it out, but it it was kind of a special occasion type thing. Okay. It wasn't something that like we played normally. Okay. So that one, they bumped up the models, um, the tiles were better, and it was, you know it looked like a, a natural progression. I don't really remember rules back then; it doesn't matter anyway. But in two thousand nine, I believe. The new Space Hulk comes out. Now, that was called third edition. And then 
they re-released it a few times after that. I think like five years after they added some stuff in the rule book, but it was still the same game. And then it, that was probably like 2014. And then another three years after that, they just re-released that one again. Cause I remember people getting mad cause they bought it thinking it was limited edition in 2014. Like, you know, buying it for 250 on eBay, getting pissed off that they re-released it. But that's kind of where we're at now. So it's in a, in a weird way, it's kind of like Blood Bowl in that it, it may have looked like different changes, but this is the third edition, in my opinion, of the game. I know it's called fourth edition somewhere, but it's the same everything. Um, when this one came out in 2009, now we saw like, oh shit, like look at these models. The Terminators, the Blood Angel Terminators in this box. Oh yeah, previous ones were always Dark Angels. That was the theme, Deathwing. Now they moved over to Blood Angels. That was another change too, from a story standpoint. Um, these models come out, and I know because in the back of the mission book, they've got these dudes on here. And I, it was like, whoa, these are better than the 40K Terminators at the time. Yeah, yeah. At the time, they did change from the old Terminators to like a little bit more spaced out, but they weren't these uh, dynamic poses and all this, ripping off a steeler head. Um, I mean, amazing look. Uh, this dude's pulling up some of the, the, the tile on the floor. So huge uh, uh, um, a leap in quality there. The Gene Steerer models, and they said, we're gonna take those further. And those they put like climbing on pieces of the space hall, the, the ship that this is all going down in. And so um, sometimes a little awkward with model size, like in things, but it looked really cool. Um, and, that, and people then use them for 40K too, because they fit nicely into a uh, Blood Angel army or a Terranid or a Gene Stealer army. You have, you have those right there and they look great. They also added in, I know they had a librarian in the other one. Um, I think they did some more with those rules. So there's, you've got psychic powers in a certain mission. You've got the little uh, like automated thing that goes what is that little like remote control car type thing that's in one of the missions um there is uh dead the dead space marine captain that's one of them too so they threw in some extras in there as well with some extra missions and i i do think that they added a few missions from the initial 09 release to the 2014 re-release it think. says they got four extra missions boarding torpedoes Add extra tiles in it too to go. Oh, and missions. extra tiles. Thank you. Yeah. So I have extreme. I think I have your space hawk. You do. Um, so 2014. So that's good. So you had the new one. Um, well, yeah, because then they just re released it 2017. Same everything. Um, so 2014, that was the, they're calling it fourth edition, but it's the same as the third edition, really. Um, and this game, we're going to get into the nuts and the bolts. But first, before we do that, well, one, I didn't even introduce Valdrick. He's in the flannel. Biron is in the Avalanche jersey. Or Tampa Lightning. Bay Lightning. Um, and Extreme is in the three-time, including a back-to-back -back World Series championship, the Cubs. 0708. The first 07. The, mm -hmm. the other 0708, not this one. Uh, I'm Johnny P. Thanks for listening and checking out Zerpcast. Is Space Hulk a board game or a dungeon crawl? Yes. Yeah. Party well, game. Extreme, you party can't answer. Because you said Blood Bowl's your favorite party game. Yeah. And I would say Space Hulk's my favorite uh, dungeon crawl. Okay. More than Arcadia Quest. Is that dungeon crawl? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a very different style, but yeah. Well, we have um, a types of game episode up there, I believe. Yes, yes. But and we talk about that. Um, I, I'd like to say this is a board game. Um, I know it looks like a dungeon crawl, but I don't know if I put it in the category. I think um, uh, we're probably going to get into a lot of the th theme and the uh, feeling of the game feels like a dungeon crawl because you're in the tight corridors and you're going through and you're, you're working as a small squad and the order your models are in matter. So like your classic dungeon crawls where you need like one guy in the front. One guy You're right. Behind. You know, I think when you look at what defines a dungeon crawl, either fantasy or sci-fi or any genre, 
me, one of the defining factors is um, like not a hodgepodge group, but a, a group of different people working together. And this is a squad, even though they have different weapons. So I always feel like it's more like a, a turn-based kind of like a, like a computer game, really. That's why there's been a lot of crossover with those two where you're, you know, I don't, I don't see like, would we, would we play this game where each of you would pick a different Terminator to be? Probably not. It would, it's also yeah. doesn't really have a loot component or a leveling up component. Yeah. And it's one hit point. You're dead. Yeah. There's no healing, which I I'll tell you why I love that uh, when we get to what we like about it. But um, what's different than a dungeon crawl? Right. Uh, usually, in a dungeon crawl, it's arranged in such a way where the heroes are a bit more badass. But you're saying that your dungeon crawl, you wanted like different people coming together to work as a team. But within the missions of Space Hulk, you have a lot of them where like you need to get the flamer to the no control. Question. There's no question. I guess my point is there's not that feeling of. I'm part of and- yeah, you know, it's okay. So either way, it doesn't matter. It's just more of a something to ponder. It is both. There you go. That's the answer. Uh, that's the correct answer. It is both. Uh, what we, you know, in talking about this game, so let's get into kind of the basic mechanics of the game. Um, when you play this game, you've got a decent uh, quick reference sheet. Um, glad they have this because it's really needed, the action point thing. Um, but you're playing this game and you're trying to achieve these missions, but it's very much like the Space Marine and the, the, the Terminator side, whoever's playing them, they're playing the game. They're achieving a mission. The Gene Stealer invasion on the Space Hulk is trying to stop them. They do have their own winning conditions, which I don't really like as much because their, their main winning condition is to stop you from doing your mission. You can just, you can just say that. Like as soon as you can't do your mission anymore, um, they win. But there's some that are timed. There's some that are like, if you have two squads of Space Marines, they say have 10 of them. There's one where if you bring them down to f- their numbers three or less, then you win kind of thing. I, I kind of like the, if you're playing Gene Steelers, no. Nah, it's like what Biron plays every game, no matter the mission is kill. Yeah, it's kill. Now, here's the thing though, to Extreme's point. Say your mission, and this is one of the first couple in, in, the, in the mission book, you've got to use your guy with the heavy flamer to exterminate this room. So when he dies, you lose. If he dies, you lose. You need to get him there and utilize that heavy flamer to exterminate the room. The gene stealer player also knows that guy is the, the linchpin to the whole thing. You kill him, they win too. So in a weird way, when I play gene stealers, I kind of just, I kind of pretend I don't know that. Because the gene stealer just knows consume and they, they're just hungry, frankly. Tyranids are just hungry. That's all. They're not bad guys. It is, that is like one of the very few things I don't like about the game yeah. is that the gene stealer also knows what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned like this game works so well as a video game and it feels like the gene stealers aren't really playing the game. And that's why I really like the solo rules that people have created for this game it just works like all you need is the gene stealers to do what gene stealers do like yep. run at you and try to kill you like okay there's only you know mike asked me earlier before we did the episode is it even fun to play as gene stealers and yeah um, i i'll say yeah with a but because it's, it's it's fun when i don't feel like playing or thinking or or i just got my ass kicked by playing the terminators i'm like well you know what you think it's easy you try and then we swap that's a fun way to do it by the way no, it, it's great. Like, I know it's been suggested by a lot of games. Like, well, after you get done, switch sides. This is the only game where I've ever done that. Like, mm-hmm. we want to switch sides afterwards because uh, most of the missions are not balanced. They're always favoring one side. Right. So it's nice to try that a couple of times and then switch sides. I agree. And, and I, this is the only, it's the only game that I've ever done that with. Even though it's yeah, just if, you, if you play Terminators first, um, then you get to see if the guy you play or person you're playing against is can do it. And then you get a break by playing g And then if you are playing second, you can say, well, I'm not going to do what you did, or I am going to do you, whatever it is. Um, it does work very well that way. Um, there's really, when it comes to decision-making in this game, because it is a very, very 
tactical game for the space marines yeah when you're playing gene stealers it is to reveal yourself the blip because there's so you're playing the game you're on a space hulk and there's these little blips on their radar that you're controlling you know how many gene stealers are there they do not they just know there's at least one i checked like zero is not an option so there's no duds they're all at least one or one two or three and it's if you reveal them you get to place them how you want facing the way you want but then the space marine player knows how many are there if you don't reveal them it's a surprise and then when they see you line of sight you get revealed and i believe they place you and they all they usually turn you the other way or something like that yeah. lots um, of gene stealers backing up through hallways yeah, but am I wrong in that those are the only, that's the only decision that you have to make as a Gene Stealer player? Uh, I mean, there's a little what, bit more. With what, the what point to come in at is the other one? The yeah. reinforcement. And, and as you're moving your blitz around, you can kind of like, you know where this door is closed and the Marines aren't going that way. So I can like get a whole bunch of crap going over there and then just flood that whole yeah. thing. But there's a lot, a lot fewer decisions to be made as a Gene Stealer for sure. Yeah, I, then there's also, I, I was never really a big fan of Gene Steelers opening and closing doors, personally, but... I like that Blips are opening and closing doors better. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the few actions that all three uh, statuses can do. Open the door, Blip and Marine and Gene Stealer. Um, so, you're playing this game, you're achieving a mission, uh, there's a certain amount of turns. Um, one thing I really like in this game, most miniature games, the number of turns you play are low because the games, them, the turns themselves take so long. This game, it seems like when you look at the missions, 15, 16 turns. Uh, I mean, it's, there's a lot of turns because they go quick. Do uh, you guys like that as part of the game? That the Because the, Mike, you said one, one wound and you're dead. That's true. When you are, you know, just to put it in perspective, when the gene stairs are over there and your space marines are here, great. You're, you may need sixes to hit, um, but you can advance for one action point and shoot at the same time. You're getting several chances. Once they close in and you are locked in hand-to-hand, -hand, you get one dice as the Marine player. Gene Steeler gets three dice. Highest score wins. I think the power sword lets you parry, but highest score wins. Uh, they're very good, which that's how they are in 40K. That's how they are in the novels. But it is uh, very much a, when they get too close, it's going to, and then you start getting it down. You have five terminators down to four and three and two. These turns do go by quick. Yeah, it starts looking really good for the space marines early on, but then the yeah. late game is when it seems the Tyranids coming around. I always run. think they have their shit together. Yeah. They got them lined up. Like, all right, I think this is the order I want. And then you're like, Overwatch, I'm going to get to shoot at him like six times. Ooh. Well, here comes three more. And Overwatch is phenomenal. Oh, this is the one game where Overwatch is the most important thing yeah. Yeah. for a marine player. Um, and then you save those command points. But you think you're all set. Like, I'm going to put the flamer guy at third. That way he's not in the back. He's not in the front. And then at some point you're going to fuck yourself. He's going to get like wedged in somewhere. But this uh, Overwatch in this game too, I think is the only game where I'm like excited about how it works. Like yeah. it, it fits into the theme of this game too. Right. Where you know, like you have that pressure and like this gene zero keeps moving one square at a time and you're missing, you're missing, you're missing. As soon as they get close to you, you know you're fucked. So, so you're like, oh, and you're like, oh, oh bad gun jams, not yeah. good. Yeah. You know the, the the theme of the game, like the story theme, but when it comes to a gaming theme, pressure is the theme of the, the game game. You know what I mean? Not the the timer in the game. You have a timer that only the marine player has, not the gene stealer player. That timer is the unsung hero of the game, in my opinion, because oh, yeah. it is truly a oh shit, what am I gonna do? As opposed to, we've all played this kind of person in any different game that just like, oh, will you just go? It doesn't fucking matter. You're going to roll a one anyway. Just go. How about the guy well, in Marvel it, who counts out squares and puts a dice in the square? Like, I want to remember that side just in case. No, no, fuck that. You got a timer. You got to move. You got to keep moving. Pressure is the name I, of the game, right, Extreme? absolutely it, it all goes into the atmosphere of what you're doing and it would be very easy if you play without that usually like when i'm introducing people to the game we won't play with the timer the first few times but we're bringing that timer out because it is very easy as a space marine player to get set up for your long shots and oh, i'm going to cover this corridor but if you have that timer on you don't have time to think about that stuff you have to get all your action points in you have to be moving 
And that's supposed to be what the story is, and it just all fits into it so well. well it's almost like this, a puzzle game in that yeah, way. Yeah, if this was yeah. a, a video, if you were playing the video game, those gene stealers are I don't know, I don't know about the turn based one. I imagine there's a timer in there, but in the uh, action, whatever first person sh- shooter version, they're closing in on you. Constantly. So you yep. fucking do something. And that should be reflected on the tabletop, which it is. And that is a, just a, a genius part of the game because there's so many things you could do as the Terminator player, uh, but like, you got to really think fast, act fast, and do what's essential. And sometimes, yeah, it does happen where you say, oh, you know what? I probably should have protect, spun him with one act, use the command point to spin him around to close that door. But that's how it would be in the situation. You don't have time to think. So, um, Extreme, when you played this, do you do you think that the mission selection is, is a is a good enough sample? Because a lot of games, when they give you set missions, you don't feel you feel like it's lacking, and you want to seek out new ones. I feel these are actually really good out of the box. I think there's some of the best that I've seen. Like it, it creates a narrative throughout the missions. Like each one feels like, all right, this is like the episode of a Space Hulk or on TV or that I'm going to watch. Or I don't know. Each one is like its own cool adventure. And most of the time, the Gene Stealers have the advantage in them. But there are some missions where like the Terminators are at more of an advantage. And I like that um, asymmetrical balance where, you know, as long as you're telling me that in advance, I like that in the game. Like, you warn me that these guys are going to lose more often, and I'm cool with it. But um, I don't know. I really love the missions. I think the missions are a big thing in this game that, I mean, you have to play the missions. You can't just throw your models down and play. Yeah, there's really no, I mean, yeah. you, you could make up your own, but it's going to be, what do the Space Marines have to do? And I would say there's 12 or missions or 20 missions. There's there's a lot in the new. Yeah. There's there's a uh, in the new rule or the. Well, they also released uh, digital missions too. Okay. Oh, 16 Roman numerals. Um, so 16. There's ones online you can find. They stepped it up with making everyone feel like a character too, which is kind of nice. That helps the dungeon crawl argument there. But uh, the missions I think are a great sample of what you want to do. Um, I think that as you're playing, especially if you switch sides, um, you really get an appreciation for the, just the style and pressure that the game really lends itself to. Um, when it comes to mechanics in the game, I don't want to like, there's plenty of how to play videos out there. Um, definitely check those out, uh, but it's pretty simple. Uh, Extreme, you mentioned uh, in our War Cry episode, way back, way back up there, about you like the dice economy of that. And this game has that. One roll, boom, that's it. That's why people are like, well, I just basically need a six. Well, that roll is not just to hit, it's to kill kill the gene stealer outright. And if you already shot at him once, you only need a five. So if you compare that to roll to hit, roll to wound, roll to save, I think they're pretty good at letting you kill him on a five once you shot at him once already. I read a review that had a quote in it that I thought was awesome uh, talking about the rules of this game. And they said it was a minimalist masterpiece. And I think that's absolutely accurate. Like they took these down to like the bare minimum of what you need and it works for this game. You don't, I mean, I'm thinking about it now. There isn't a stat line. There just isn't. You think, well, power fist, isn't that like harder to pick up? We're not doing any of that. That's not what we're doing. The the lightning claws have special rules, but it's super simple. Lightning claws, they did. Yeah, but it's it's easy. And Thunder Hammer as as a bonus one too, I think. Um, And the Power Sword lets you parry. I think it's a make them re-roll their highest or something. Yeah. But and you're um, plus one on yours. Oh yeah, you're plus one as well. Yeah. Um, But Steelers roll three dice. They're picking the highest. So they're they're going to have the advantage in close combat as they should. Uh, That's just (laughs) that's how it works. Your job as the Space Marine player is to give yourself enough room to give yourself at least two or three uh, attempts at them before they get in your face. And like you said, Extreme Overwatch is phenomenal. Uh, Mike, you asked about why save command points. Well, I'm going to spend those to do Overwatch as you're closing in on me because I've already taken my turn. 
So my question was, why is the uh, command point total hidden? And that was because, so the Tyranid player doesn't know, you know, because you, you could do some extra, you can. Yeah, you, you don't want them to know how many you have total and how many you have stashed. Yeah, yeah. And so also, I think. I, I, I forgot about the stash thing. There's some, there's some shenanigans you can do with the stashed ones. That... I think there's, in typical GW fashion, they do this kind of stuff. I think there's actually a line in there that says, if you catch the Space Marine player using like the wrong amount, you automatically win or something. Something like, <laughs> like a like an illegal procedure kind of thing. Like, and if if you saw them use five and that counter flipped only showed four, you win, mate. I'm like, ah, I don't want to win like that. <laughs> um, so, I want to talk about extreme that quote you said about the minimalist masterpiece. And actually, this will lead into a pros and cons. There's actually something I really don't like about the mechanics of the game. As a fan of the game, I still I don't like this. Um, and I'm gonna, hopefully this this because I want to keep using this, this. Can you see that or no? I think so. Um, I Space Marines have four action points, and Gene Sealers have six. And then there's a chart that says here are the actions. Here's what the points cost. In my opinion, as a game designer, a published game designer, uh, I think it should be one of those things should be a constant. I would like to see these actions cost this for everybody, including if I want to write my own version and have, you know, Necrons jump aboard. Opening the doors one, turning half or whatever, whatever, one, and then you can increase more. Or say, that's fine, Gene Steeler, it's easier, they get a free turn, Space Marines don't, but then we should have the same number of. It always seemed a little bit clunky to me to have two variables. Am I crazy in talking about that, or is that, is that does that make sense? That makes sense. Um, I mean, it, it, it was never anything that really jumped out at me, but I, I see what you're saying, and that makes sense. I, it, the reason I'm going to bring it up because I haven't played in a while, but the last time I played, I shouldn't have to look at this reference sheet so many times. I understand it's a quick reference sheet, and we're supposed to use things that, that are a reference sheet. However, as we all know, once you play a game a few times, you don't even need anything. You look up an obscure rule, but the game itself, you don't need to pick up anything. I found myself picking this up because I got a little confused because we swapped sides and I forgot how many it took to do different things. And as a Space Marine player, I don't want to waste my timer picking up even a one sheeter. So if I knew, if I just committed it to memory that for everybody, um, moving backwards is two, I got it, but a blip, it's only one. So the fact that I remember that a blip is one to move back and a gene stealer is two to move back and so is a Marine, that threw me off a little bit and in a way that I didn't think was needed. I thought, why not just say blips have more action points and you know make it the same? I, don't know. I know it's a little nitpicky, but um, in a game that I was, I wanna use the, the, the minimalist masterpiece mechanics. Um, is that an alliteration, Mike? believe so uh i want to use those but that's still always kind of like wait why are they different oh well gene stealers are quicker they can do things oh well isn't that already denoted by their more action points why not just give them eight then or something or you know i mean I, I know you probably don't want them to move that far so i get probably why but that one always threw me that i look i had to look at that more times than i wanted to in a typical games workshop game or a typical board game even but they also I, I don't mean, why does it say yeah because right they don't have facing but technically it says going backwards one I, you're right they're not, they're not really going backwards because there is no backwards yeah. um, or flips are op space marines can't move sideways but gene stealers can for one like here's an example and sorry turn Oh, because there is no sideways? Oh, yeah, blip yeah, blip one, Gene Stealer one, Space Marine dash. Space Marines can't move sideways. I get why they're in a bulky technical... Yeah, they they move like tank controls. Control. Yeah, I get why all of that. I just thought that wouldn't there have been a way to normalize the stats or the, um, the actions? And again, that was me thinking about porting in other models 
this is written for terminate space brain terminators against gene steel is written for that you on earlier you were before we started the show you were like well i'd love to be able to pop in this army and this army and have different whatever well now you've got to tweak the table again scout marines move like blips but still have four action points okay or scout marines have five because they're a little quicker but then there's a few things they're still better at but you don't so, want to play them anyway because the models look like shit but those do especially yeah exactly but i just think that I, I wonder if if there was another version, you know, that seems like they found their stride because this was the third one and then they just kind of reissued it for a fourth of sorts. Um, I wonder if there's one more step after this to make it even smoother that would allow you to bring in other models to, to, to play the game. We all know like open a door is one or to do this is two or to do this is one or that, that's all. My kind of uh, dream vision for what Space Hulk could be from a business perspective would be instead of, I understand not being able to keep that box on the shelf, like going through production runs would just be insane. I get that. And that's why the, they did the limited runs. But you could have expansions that were standalone games that could then be used across. So you could have a new version of Deathwing come out with Dark Angels and whoever else. If you want to keep doing Gene Stealers or you know, bring another race in and those could have their own chart on the back and then you can kind of mix or match from there without making so, it one universal stat line. I think that's a good segue in, in sticking with the, because we, we've already hyped up the game a lot. I think we, we kind of covered a lot of the pros, which we, we can, we'll still do a recap, but um, one of the big things I noticed about this when whoever first brought, someone brought up in this group reviewing this game a long time ago and they kept getting pushed like, I think months ago, we were like, Space Hulk, yeah, yeah. And like, nah, nah, nah. This is our last review of our first season of this show. Our next episode is episode 50. We're going to review our reviews. It's going to be great. Everyone watch that one too. Just as this review episode has been pushed back to the end, I also find this has been pushed to the back burner in everybody's collection of everyone who says, I love this game. Why isn't it on your table for game night more often? Does anyone know? Uh, I don't own it. Point, you're on. Extreme, you love this game. Well, you, why, one, why'd you sell me yours? Two, why, why, why isn't this on, this is your game night table. You Are needed you it for weed money. <laughs> um, I, as great and simple as this game is and as easy it is to teach people, I still think you're only teaching it to other gamers. So you're already limited on your audience. So you're not showing non-gamers how to play this game. They could learn to play the game. Their learning curve is going to be a little steeper, but it could happen, but it just is not something you're going to do. So you're already limited on your audience. And then I think that audience already has, I don't know, bigger, deeper games in mind usually. When you say other your... gamers, you mean 40K enthusiasts or just gamers? Uh, miniature gamers, probably. Miniature, miniature board games like that people that are familiar with those games at least, which I did go out of my way when researching this topic to watch reviews from people that only play board games to kind of get their view on it, which I thought was really interesting. The things that they were picking out and complaining about, I was like, that, that's not really an issue. You're just used to- You're just your an a-hole. I watched one of those- You're just an a-hole board gamer. There was a guy I, I watched too earlier today and he was exactly what you said. It might've been, you might've watched the same one. And he, he was like, you know, I always knew they had really nice models, but I never, like, you never knew, like, or, or he's like, I, until I saw it, I didn't know how good they were. I mean, what models have you been looking at? Is it only Fantasy Flight models or something? Then maybe, but it was a, a fresh board gamers review on things, but he, he liked it a lot. I think it was from a guy that normally would be uh, like not a 40K guy, not a battle guy, and not a games workshop guy. And I'll tell you why I, I also say this. He managed to slip this in his review. You know, uh, for a while, there was a lot of fan-created content. GW shot all that down on Board Game Geek, though. And I already, like, I can already tell there's a little bit of uh, oh, old, he's one of those. old salt, as I think our, some of our listeners might appreciate. Uh, like, some like someone who doesn't work for the company think they have some sort of ownership over an IP that they have no investment in? Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. I 
I did I did watch that review. That that is one that I did watch. And I thought it was hilarious that he was so hurt by this IP protection. But then when he got to the end, he was like, I don't really like the 40k universe. It's too dark for me. And I don't really play GW games. It's like, why do you care then? Right. <laughs> it was weird. Uh yeah, I just so there's there's a little bit of that. It's you know, and again, if it's labeled like it is a board game, I mean, it's in a it's in a full on GW and Domitus box type thing now. But back in the day, it wasn't. It was just like a little, you know. Board I think I think there's no reason that GW can't keep that as a permanent print item, and release well, expansion packs that come with models and the rule okay. sheet, and that's so all you need. You said, Baron, you're saying it should come out with releases extreme earlier. You just said, um, yeah, why don't they have these expansions? And so my rebuttal to that is. This game, for whatever reason, doesn't have, at least it appears to me, doesn't have the same level of enthusiasm as games like Necromunda has, even though we talked in that episode about how the rules are just a mess and these rules are not a mess. That game has a following of people wanting to buy more stuff. I, I've never seen people crave more of Space Hulk. Is that because is they've that only the, ever been given the two right, options? Is it, a, is it a chicken egg thing? Yeah. Where I only play it, but all I know is I don't see this game being played. You know where I see it being played? The one guy at Adepticon that has a 3D thing he built. That is and, the one and only time I've played it. And, in and before he has, by the way, before he has the one he brings now, he used to have one because I remember I saw it in White Dwarf years ago. The, the, the floor tiles were made out of the bottoms of square bases. And I was like, how the fuck do you get so many square bases that you can use the bottoms with the little bubbles, little circles to be the bases? I, I thought it was crazy that you had a thousand square bases. You must have worked there. But that that's who plays this game. And Baron, you probably played that guy and got your ass kicked in 12 minutes. Um, I didn't play. Told me the story. Yeah. So me and a friend, friend of the show, Jose Mata, we're, we, we signed up because every year they have, it's like 10 bucks a person to play a, a round of Space Hulk in this beautiful terrain that he has. Vast, beautiful terrain. Everything's uh, all supplied. You just show up. Supplied, you just show up. And it was me and Jose. We had to play the Gene Steelers because there was a guy who his whole thing was, I go to Adepticon and just play this over and over again. And he knew every mission like the back of his hand. And we got curb stomped and it was a terrible experience. And that's why I thought I was going to hate this game. But after watching some bat reps, I'm like, oh, this game can be good and fun. Just don't play with that asshole. Yeah. Um, this game could suffer from the, this is all I play, and thus it will be reflected. Because there's a certain pattern. Like, if you played enough, you're going to be like, I do this. if this happens, I do this. There's rules. Well, there's a pattern to all of it. There's a pattern to how you deploy your yep. experience. There's a pattern to what route in the maze you take. Um, where you stop a guy, he that's his post. He's gonna do Overwatch there. Turn him like there's there's certain. It's like a video game, right? Yeah, it's especially like, that it's, where it's the train's not gonna change for the entire con. Right. When you play a video game and like a, the old side scrollers, like when we grew up, like it was like pattern like, record. Pa memorize the pattern. Right. It's you yeah. keep playing it. Like okay, now I'm to this point. I know from this point, you always gotta do this. Turn this knob this way. Do this there. You learn more each time, and that's how that that would not be fun to play at all. Um, so I think that's a con because when you come to replayability, yeah, you don't want to have somebody master anything. But with I 20 missions, if you get to that point, you've gotten your money's worth out of the game. Yeah. Well, I guess if you were playing a, uh, a traditional dungeon crawler because of the, the uh, variable of other players and what they're really going to do, you don't usually encounter that. Mm -hmm. You encounter that guy that is going to just stomp you because he knows everything so well and you've only played zero games and he's played 1,000 games, mm -hmm. it's going to show. And one can say that for any game, but uh, it's, when there's missions and there's clearly defined, uh, like, what's the word? Like, um, thing, just things to do, but like... You're still, by defined, turn three, my assault cannon needs to be right. here. It's not just... You know what? I'm gonna search the room. No, it's do this, this, this. He's the same guy that if we were playing a dungeon crawler and it was a set amount of missions, would take over the game and be a prick to play with because he's telling everyone, no, nope. be the pandemic player. Right. No, you go here. You have to do this, you have to do that. Well, my guy would mm, we don't care what your guy would do. You do this, you do this, you do this, you yep. do this. And the only time he doesn't get yelled at for that is when he's playing all the guys. Like I just think if, if GW wanted to. 
they could make this base game available and and really market it saying space Hulk, new and improved here's our release plan we're going to release the gene stealer cult expansion pack that has everything you need to add them to the campaign and then the you know ultra ultramarines and then whatever i think they could i think that um you know and, and they've got they've got the stats to show how many people how many people bought at the different uh release time the, oh again it's the same box pretty much yep 09 2014 2017 i think i think it was the last one because that was the one when it was just re-released stores got it and, again and, but, and i want them to do something similar like i mentioned where i want the expansions with different armies and stuff but at the same time like you go back historically they did that in first edition and kind of ruined the game so maybe yeah. we're better off with them not doing just, that i i we don't know what the answer is because we, we just don't know because, they, has, gw has the numbers they know what was sold you know we talked about in our necromunda episode um how shadow war armageddon might have been a uh a trial probably really. yeah just to see what what's out there people want skirmish in this format uh, you know i don't but know what, it, what you get with these numbers i just know that the other specialist games that were under that moniker um there are some that have phased faded out completely you know epic and battlefleet gothic and um, but there's still a following for mordheim even though there's no game for years there was a following for Necromunda and they're still there and they're happy with all the new kick-ass models, just as we're very happy with all the models. Um, Blood Bowl, you've got your little civil war there with the oldies and the, and the noobs, but they know that people want the stuff. You know, there's a brand new release of that game and a new rule book that didn't have to come out, but they did. They knew people would buy it. Spike magazines and all this stuff. Why doesn't Space Hulk ever get any of that treatment? Well, uh, I mean, it definitely could. I think you do have to be careful because a, a lot of the charm of Space Hulk is that it's so simple and you start adding more expansions to it, you start pushing that and you, it's very easy to tip over the other side. Yeah, unless you put effort I, I into balance. Something that, don't, that didn't already like the fact that there was, if you look at this game compared to the second edition, which you played Extreme, you have um, the, you have a Broodlord, you have like psychic powers, you have um, the dead space marine captain. You have the cyber, the cyber alter task unit, the cat unit, little thing. You have um, extra stuff. You have lightning claws. You have thunder hammer. You have assault cannon. You might have had that in the first one. I know you had a flamer in the first one. I think all those things were new. Um, you didn't have a thunderhead. So you have all these new things. They kept it simple. They did with that. But do you think it's that moment of we? We can't do too much because then we 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 lose what made it charming as you say uh, maybe i i hesitate to give them that much credit but maybe they were thinking that far ahead um i to kind of go to your point too with people not playing it and i think it falls into a very similar category with one, one aspect that we talk about all the time when we were playing at conventions people would walk up and be like oh blood bowl i used to play that Space Hulk is the same like nostalgic thing where if you happen to get it out, people are going to walk by and be like, oh, Space Hulk, I love Space Hulk. Like, do you though? When's the last time you played it? I know you love it. You say you love it, but when's the last time you played Space And they go, get away from me, creep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, when that happens with Blood Bowl, you know, what, what do you say when that happens in Blood Bowl? Because that's happened to you, Extreme. When you're at a con, you're playing Blood Bowl. Oh, man. Like when I was an idiot, I used to play like you know, you always there's always like a double edged yeah. um backhanded compliment. I was like, oh blah blah man, I love that game back when I was a child. I liked that game before I knew what good rules were. <laughs> right. It's always that. Like, yeah, I, like, I used to play that. Then I wised up. Like there's always a <laughs> then I like or when we're playing <laughs> uh techno techno bowl. Oh blood bowl. Yeah. That guy I mean, came up and thought we were playing Blood Bowl. I'm like, dude, I don't even have enough time to like engage with this, this conversation. <laughs> Where's not even the same game? <laughs> Where's all the models? Where are their boxes? <laughs> well, the boxes aren't even. Uh, I don't even want to do this right now. <laughs> uh, so, extreme. What what do you say when people pull that line on you? Uh, usually, not much, because those are if they're already coming up with that line, then there's no conversation to be had. So, usually, I'm just like, oh, uh huh. Yep, we're still cool. playing now. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We don't say. Well, why don't you sit down and we'll play a game? Right. You don't. You don't look at it as an opportunity 
to be a, what, what do they used to call the pathfinders for GW? Were they uh, outriders? Outriders, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's an outrider opportunity for you. You get a chance to audition I, I, for a job that you don't get paid for. Oh, <laughs> shit. I, I think anytime you're demoing games or trying to pick people into games, the first thing you have to do is kind of read your crowd. So if someone comes up with that attitude already, like don't waste your time with that person. That's not the person you're going to bring in. You're going to bring in the guy that's just sitting there like, oh, this looks really cool this is purple or something, or ask, what is this game? That's the guy. Every, every game volunteer doing demos has that much awareness to read the, read their crowd? I don't like know. A, like the knuckle duster guy who asked me if I wanted to do a demo, and I said, nope. Oh, he didn't know who I asked oh, you. You didn't read the crowd. crowd. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think so. What I knew was going to blow That's such me a up. like scarred memory for both of you. You know, like it's just there's that, that moment keeps. I actually did that because I thought it would be very funny. But well, no one else was around though. At, no. And then it, it, Brian felt was like there. Doubled, it felt like you doubled down on it later because you went over to Todd's booth and bought a bunch of wild yes, That's the only reason <laughs> I had to really hit the hit it home. Well, I, I think that the common rule with that is you're you know if you goof on a friend as part of your group for the appreciation of the other friends right not a not a bully but like a, just a you know i did it as a goof to make these guys laugh but when you do it one-on-one -on -one, it seems mean <laughs> it was, was kind of mean and i i, I almost feel bad i it was probably the most stunning thing that's happened to me because <laughs> sure. <laughs> nope <laughs> So, uh, so getting back to Space Hulk, when, when you see people do the nostalgic thing and all that, um, I don't think enough of those people are there to warrant what you guys want out of this game. I just, I just don't see it. I would love to be wrong. I, just, I think GW has actually made the right decision to just do that mass release, and then it goes away. You either got it or you got to pay scalper. It's not ridiculous. I don't think, I, I'm pretty sure you can get this online. You guys can check if you want, but for well, under a little over 200 bucks. Brand new? Yep, sealed. 200 Nib. bucks. Nib, as they say. And it was probably 150 retail. Yeah, it's not It's not insane because they they made enough of them to satisfy the market. Now, board gamers, I'm pretty sure that same guy, Extreme, also commented on the price tag, I think. I think he brought up. Uh, and it's like, what? Well, once again, when you play Games Workshop games, that shit doesn't phase us. Yeah, I'm sorry you're poor. I mean, I'm not rich, but I understand that's part of getting into GW games. The price tag scared yeah. people off. And now in the second secondary market, it is 200. But I don't think that's crazy because I know that it was 150 at first, but someone new sees 200, might get a little scared off there. But now so, some of these board games like Gloomhaven and stuff like that, and even Zombicide I, Super. Getting the up biggest there ones are 100, I think is the cap. I don't, I, so Gloomhaven is a hundred bucks, I believe. It's more no. than that. Really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, the weird fetish game I bought for 400 bucks? Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, we don't talk about that, but no. I think Very when you look at like the box games, like your Descents and, and whatnot, those are, I think, all around a hundred bucks. And I think the average board gamer who likes miniatures is comfortable paying a hundred bucks for a heavy box. Right, they'll, they'll drop three, four hundred to get the box and all the expansions, but the initial they, box they can't be that much. Right, they will, but they want that first set to be eighty. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're right. So getting back to what you said with Games Workshop making the right decision and not doing expansions, I think you're probably right. Um, but my vision for what I wanted with expansions would be more of like this is a standalone game. You could play Space Hulk with it, or like one of their standalone games that they have where it's not really a game. It's just selling you the cheap models. Yeah, it's a <laughs> trick. Do one of those. Yeah, why not do one of those? It's actually like an expansion of Space Hulk that has new Dark Angels models. Or I, yeah, it wouldn't even cost them that much more to make, oh, instead of this stupid game no one's going to play, it's the same amount of cardboard, same amount of plastic. You know, I think for as little as they care about Kill Team, they already know that's that. Mm -hmm. They already know that if you play Kill Team, you can buy a, a squad off the shelf and play. And then you get stomped and you say, well, now I need this, these guys. Now I need a heavy weapon. You don't buy the one model because you can't buy the one model. You buy another squad. Before you know it, oh, shit, I may as well play Warhammer 40,000. 
I don't think Space Hulk would ever give that level of easy feeder. It is not a gateway game, as they say. I, I don't. I don't see it. Yeah. Um, I also don't see, like Mike, you you've said before. While you like the 40k universe, you hate Space Marines. Um, I don't see you having much interest in this game. Am I wrong, Mike? I, I'll be honest with you. The I've I'll be honest with you. I've never played this game. Mm -hmm. I've never actually that, played. That tells me the answer, honestly. Well, I own the game. Of course, you'll never, play. never play it. But watching, I watched a couple of demos okay. uh, early on. People playing at the bunker, uh, but I, I, I didn't know the people. I was just watching them play, and it, it was okay. But actually, watching those videos that, that I, I didn't prep for this, I'm like, this is a much better game, a much simpler game, but still playable. Are you, also, are you talking about the war, the war gamer girl videos? Yeah, yeah, those, those are, are really also good. Credit where it's due. Um, Wargamer Girl does very good battle report videos. Yes. yes. Uh, I want to give her that credit because, Mike, if you love this, my, again, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to sway you, but if you truly thought this game was cool, watching the guys at the bunker playing, it should have sold you. Why didn't it? It should have sold you. You watch those guys play. If I watched you and Biron, not Biron, bad example. If I watched you and Extreme playing Extreme. Blood Bowl, and I said, oh, I always knew about it, but I, I'm a 40K guy and fantasy. I'd go on and buy it. Or if I watched, you know, you know, Jason Turner play Necromunda. He loves the game of Necromunda. I watched someone who really liked a, a side game, a specialist game, play it. You playing Mordheim, Mike, would have sold me on Mordheim. Those I guys should have sold you on. I don't, I don't think it, it, it – I'm glad there's awesome battle reports to watch that make you think it's cool, but – I don't, and I would love for you to prove me wrong, by the way. I, I don't see you going up to your friendly ass Grognards group saying, guys, for the next round, the next two month thing, Space Hulk. And then, like, crickets. Yeah. And well, then I, I will else, say, when I watch the people play playing them, um, Drowned Earth next, guys. When I watched them play at the bunker, I had no feel for how the game was played. Yeah, her video gives you the feel. It yeah, exactly I feel like I could sit down right now and play a game without reading the rule book and get 90% of it correct. Okay, that, that's fair. So you're saying as a spectator, you didn't, you weren't as educated in that game. Right, and I was also, I so, wasn't there to watch a demo. I was yeah. there probably waiting for somebody and these two dudes were there. So I was convinced. You, know the, what? They, you were the convincer? Maybe, maybe they thought doesn't, yeah. doesn't lend itself as... Um, What's the word? Now, I don't want to say visual appeal because it, it does have visual appeal. Yeah. Like we talked about in our Dead Zone episode. You walk by a Dead Zone game, it looks like the fucking greatest thing in the world. It really does. Because it looks like, oh my God, look at this thing. Uh, but maybe watching it doesn't teach you anything. So some, something, something you mentioned there with Mike, like trying to get the group to play, I think that's another reason why it may not get played as much too. It's not really like a group game, like your gaming group doesn't play this. It's you and one other person. There's no faction. No, there's no, there's right. no list, list of faction, I should say. Yeah, fair. Um, this is, this is a, uh, you know, a board game or a dungeon crawl, which is still a board game. It's with miniatures. It is not a, uh, a skirmish miniatures game. There is really, uh, maybe I'll ask, What's the term? Is it the sixty-four million dollar? What's the question? What did they used to say? Sixty-four thousand, which is nothing, but now, by the way, like, well, yeah, it was the seventies. Yeah, but now it's like you win a million for like spinning a wheel. It's crazy. But the sixty-four thousand dollar question: Is this a game anyone would ever get into? Not the weird guys beer on it. I'm talking about normal gamers. Who's is anyone getting into this game? Every every Friday night we're playing this. No, no. unless unless you're doing some. Custom missions and factions, no. And even when you do that, there's an end. And yeah. it's, it's sooner than you think. And I don't want it to be. I would love to get into this game. But, okay, so since we've kind of merged our pros and cons, that the con of, and I go back to what Mike said before, you know, in, in our chat, but we brought it in, was the, if there, there shouldn't be a, a drop-off in, uh, I don't, not gamesmanship because we already know gene steers can see what they're doing and whatever but there's a there's a drop off in fun factor when you play gene stealers i'd say so a yeah. true game you get into both sides should be equally fun to play I, that that's 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 why 
I still like this game a lot, but there's there's a half a point dropped for one thing and half a point for another, but they're big things. They're they're based on the enjoyability of the game. And I think I think the the fact that the the gene stealers are not nearly as fun to play makes it easier for them to be controlled by an AI system for single play. You you know who this game's perfect for, and this is not a knock on it, but it's great for like a dad or a mom and their kids to play. Right. And the kids usually play gene stealers, but every now and then they might get a little cocky, like, oh, you want to try? And then they go, oh, I'll go. Back. That's what it's fun for, because then you kind of satisfy some extra mechanics for the parent. But I don't see, Biron, if you and I were a two person game group and we just got together and played games, we're not playing this all the time because it's, it's just, it's going to lose something. And I think it's because the gene stealer player is really the DM. Do you think okay. there's someone that's heavily invested in uh, Mantic sci-fi games that might have a compatriot that he would make play Gene Steelers all the time? Who are you talking about? Coach and Fabian. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think they play Dead Zone. But I mean, Dead Zone is No, bad. but did, can't you see him saying, you're playing Gene Steelers? Oh, oh you just mean as a, what I picture. A, he's a bottom is what I'm saying. <laughs> you got to use Mantic term playing project pandora right right and tarsag. It's horses and vermin <laughs> he's playing tarsag could you imagine if um they were able to do something where once pandora the music thing started they can like sue them and <laughs> become set and mantic gets a billion dollars yeah you know that like there's there's no that, that, that the footing was never laid for, for that to ever happen well they do a kickstarter for their uh, legal fight yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and if now um, we have to trim the sides and now it's um, instead of Project Pandora, it's Project Ran Randa? <laughs> Jed, Randa? Project Pandora. Japan. Japan. No. <laughs> and Jack Japan. Andor, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that harder to do than I ever thought it would be to cut off two letters? Uh, so this is not a game we're getting into. A gaming group is not getting into this game. And that's unfortunate. Uh, everyone agrees on that? Oh, yeah. It's my favorite type of thing. It's a game you don't really get into, but it can still be good. Extreme. Yeah, it's a game that you're like, hey, let's do this. It's a special occasion game. Yeah, just once. Yeah. Hey, Todd, can we stay open late and play some some of this game? And he'll say no. And be like, oh, damn it. Extreme, I don't know the relationship you have with your son anymore, but for a time, wouldn't it be, this have been a really fun game to play like six missions in a night with him? Yeah, absolutely. And every time this game came out, like we did play multiple, it was never like we got it out and we played one mission. Right. Like every time it came out, we played four or five games of it. Well, because once you set the tiles up, you want to use some of them already. It takes a while to set those up. So. Hey, I was going to ask you that. What's the setup time? What's the prep time on this? Uh, there's a lot. It takes a little while to set up, but even then, like, so you play the mission and usually the way it would go is whoever's playing the Terminators would play through and like, oh, well, I could do better. Like, I, I see where I messed up. Let's right. re-rack it and play again. And then usually after that second time, they're like, okay, let's switch sides. Well, that's also a testament to the, how quick of a game it is. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty quick game. The timer helps, but just the, the way the game plays is pretty quick. Um, it just it yeah. lends itself and to it, short turns, but lots of turns. So usually we would play like three times each mission because we wanted to, but then also because of the setup. Right. Like so it was one really tip, a setup to pro tip, always play on a bigger table than what you think you need. Yep. <laughs> because the last couple times I played this, I did it like a coffee table kind of game. And I didn't really like scale up where everything was. So I'm like, hey, I know it says there's two quarters there. Would you mind if I just did one? Like, <laughs> because I already screwed myself and it's already out there and there's no way this shit's going to work to say, can we just bring it? No, it's going to all come. Don't do that. Um, the tiles are pretty good, by the way. Let's kind of get into some. We don't really pretty do the good. components too much. I think there's some of the best tiles ever made. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go. Can I'm you not gonna, snap them against each other for me? I'm not going to. Um, hold on. I'm going to disagree a little bit. And actually, they're best ever made. I'll tell you why. Now, we're all nerdy, dorky gamers. Biron's bagging even worthless comics. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people aren't going to take as much care. I haven't played with this version a lot of maybe 10 times. These will get frayed big time. These will, these will come up big time. I know that because the counters have done it already. So I, they're very good. 
but fantasy flight does better tiles in my opinion because they have like a linen kind of a linen paper, paper yeah and it like it, it like folds down so instead of it being cardboard here they, those kind of fold down i'm not saying you can be reckless but you can be a little more hard on the components than these but i prefer also, that over the no connectors at all that some there's no reason not to print another set in the back by the way mm -hmm. yeah they did yeah. there's no reason not to there is reason what because the front side's embossed so then you'd have to emboss both sides you, you know what extreme emboss these nuts i'm talking about <laughs> you could all right so how about this we play one like this it's inside of like the eye of terror and we don't even see fucking walls they don't even exist because we're already in a place where we can't even understand what's going on so i'll play it on the black but then you don't know right. your squares but i get it it's not embossed but fantasy flight does it just saying just saying <laughs> they emboss those no they don't need to they're a, they're a rougher texture they're uh they have, they're grippier. way too much credit to, to either the word emboss because you like saying it or the results of being yeah. embossed either way uh i won't these say space oak, these space oak tiles are awesome because it almost feels like there's some terrain on there there's there is. little rubber places. I, I i give you that totally i you can't tell but well there's a little bit you, you could probably tell right it's it's got texture it it's feels like on these grates here i'll give you that but you got to be careful with them the, the cardboard sides will fray up you should and, bag and board those tiles and i don't know about I, i'm pretty sure i did this because i'm a fucking dork but i i think i took a blade to, to smooth these, these little down. mickeys out yeah i'm pretty sure they don't they do not pop out very well um now, where it really helps are like on the counters because, you know, feels a certain way, but still good. Um, they're very good components, but because of the cardboard on the side, you do, you do have to be a little more careful than you would with some other board games. That's all I'm saying. Very good. I'm not going to say, what, what did you, what term did you use extreme? The best ever? The best tiles ever. Yes. Cool. Why'd you, why'd you sell me yours then? Because you got gay all over it? No, I, I maybe you had two sets. I don't know. <laughs> I think there was a reason. Because you switched the Mall Madness board. <laughs> um, it is very, they do look really cool, though. Like, from from a, a look standpoint. How slidey are uh, they on a smooth surface, though? Um, they are a little slidey, so I highly recommend if you could play on the bottom of a game map. Yeah. Like a, a but, rubber. They, but they walk together, so you have your whole map. So right. your whole map. This, totally. this is not like when we did our dungeon saga and it's like that that's a mess because then the, even the connectors are worthless but um this is they do lock together so yeah there's no issue there but you still would want to play because a lot of dungeon crawlers you've got a lot of larger sections this game is a lot of one one long or you know one row corridors so you do want to play it i think on a mat it's a, a, a table that's not a like a slippery dinner table kind of thing because they do slide around a little bit but it's not that bad because they're locked in um the doors are pretty good there's a little plastic uh up into the doors those are pretty good double-sided um you could use the command point tokens as intended i've heard people complain online about uh certain ones feeling different ways if, listen, if you're that guy that feels the way things why the fuck oh, this is definitely a four yeah yeah like get this like somewhat related you know i bought those wooden tokens for star wars legion mm -hmm. and they're awesome i love them i don't i don't remember if it's the guy who made them in his description or a review one of the two said you really should put these in coin cases though so that way you can't tell which which is which I'm like no you know what i want to feel wood that's why I fucking bought wood. Mm -hmm. I wanted plastic, I buy plastic. I'm not putting them in coin cases. And also I don't have to protect them. They're tokens, they're like poker chips. You know, they're, they're wooden. These counters are fine, but some people have preferred to use a dice for the command points. You got to keep it secret then. You got to put it to the side because Gene Sears is not supposed to see it. I'd rather use the tokens as intended. But, um, and some people put them in a bag. I just flip yep. them upside down. What's wrong with that? I suppose if one gets completely trashed, maybe you should put them in a bag, but if they're relatively normal condition, 
flipping them upside down is fine too. Also, if the sergeant, if you redraw it, do you put the original token back in the bag? I think you do. Yeah, so then you've got to do the... I think you put it back and you can still draw it again. Yeah. yeah. So flipping it, you know, it might be... A, because, for, a, because for dice people, they would just re-roll it and then you could get any result again. Um, so it, I think it does say to keep it in the bag. I don't think it says to pull it out. Okay. So I don't remember. Yeah. Um, if you ever do play, Mike, I'll just kill your sergeant right away and we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, and a pro pro tip: you can save a lot of money by getting Space Hulk with none of the miniatures. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of that. Um, I will tell you that I don't even have the Blood Angels anymore. Um, sorry, Extreme. Um, I did. I did. I will say this: I did one coat of um, contrast on them. Just for actually, I showed them off in one of the videos. I just I only recently sold them like a couple weeks ago. And I only did it because I put them online on eBay because I knew I wanted to use Deathwing instead, or um, Death Watch instead, uh, which are the alien hunters. And I kind of wanted to use those in 40K and Kill Team. There is a market for the components se separately on this. Yep. Buron's right. You can buy this game a lot cheaper without the models. It and, looks like 120 bucks with no models. Or alternatively, you could buy the set and sell off the models. And pay, pay part of the set back, yeah. There's people buying the dead space marine for like 50 bucks. I've seen crazy. Like, cause he's used in like one mission in the game. Anyway, and you can use anything for him. Mm -hmm. You could put a coffin there if you wanted to. Um, the, the librarian, that's a great librarian terminator. That is a $40 model. So you could actually sell. So I use death watch terminators in my game. And I do, you still, I have the gene stealers cause I use regular, I mix them into 40 K. Um, the models are great, but you're right, Bjorn. You can you can definitely do without if you wanted to. Uh, Mike, you could play this game with um, what are the Nurgle Terminators called? Death Cult or um, for, they had a name, but you could the you Death Shroud Terminators. Death Shroud, yeah. So you might you might have to fudge some of the weapons, but you could if you said, ah, I don't like Space Marines, but I want to play this game. You can use those. You know, it's there, there's. You do want to have something for the special guys, though, because almost every mission has more than just yeah. a power fist storm bolter. You either have your captain with the sword, captain with the thunder hammer, or your chain fist, or your ass assault cannon, or um, heavy or flamer. And the assault cannon seem to be very key in this game. Yeah, that's a good heavy one. flamer because you could block corridors to stop the gene stealers component. Yeah, but flamer if i recall is a you have to re recharge it's a it's to use or, or the assault that... cannon has limited ammunition yeah wasn't the flamer so something though extreme like with the counters yeah the flamer is limited on ammunition the assault cannon is also limited but not as limited and a lot of missions has a reload option yeah so the flamer that one mission it's either the second or the third one in the book where you you I got think it's, it's, Okay, just a second. Yeah. You yeah gotta, I think you get quick shots at the flamers. You always have to hold on to one in that mission. You got to be real smart and real, um, you know, wise with how you use them and how you protect them. Like I said earlier, that's a little bit of a con for me, the not the Space Marine side, but the Gene Steeler side of knowing who the target is. Like, they're not supposed to know who the, who the, who the best one to kill is. So the gamesmanship in the, in the game, there's a little... There's a good amount of that there, but I think you already realize that because of, you know, things like beer on story, the, nope, you only do this. The best way to win in the shortest amount of turns is to go bing, bing, boom, 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 and do that. Um, that's going to happen in this game. So if you're comparing this to other games in the 40 K universe, it's probably the, the mo one of the most gamey and the least, I don't want to say thematic is very thematic. Don't get me wrong. It's the least, I don't know. Anything can happen because you're not yeah. shucking buckets of dice, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and there's, and you have to be conservative about the weapons. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Maybe you like both ways. You know, I'm playing orcs in 40 K. Hold on. I got my shirt filled with dice to just fucking throw on the table. I've done that in 40 K, but I also appreciate the one dice, one kill philosophy as well. Um, We've covered a lot, brief on the gameplay, mostly a lot of pros, a couple of cons. 
Anything else we want to address on this one? Talk about the models. They're great. Components are solid. Um, very nice. Just like, what do you call it? Like all encompassing kind of thing in the box. 16 missions. You play those multiple times because you figure I lost. I want to try again, or I want to try the other side. So 16 times three or four, you've got a lot of playability in this game. And then there's there nine digital missions. Nine digital missions and probably others out there in White Dwarf. When, when the game was re-released, I bet White Dwarf came out with some in each of the re-releases. I bet they did. Um, yeah, it looks like the digital missions, there's a Dark Angels, Ultramarines, and Space Wolves. Okay. I was actually a little surprised they didn't go with the Ultramarine theme because that's their thing is... Yep. Well, keep they wanted mind, people to actually want to buy it, I guess. I, True, as, yeah. As an old time 40K guy, Ultramarines wasn't always their thing. Yeah. I, I've always been under the, the impression from when I got into 40K that th this, Ultramarines were not the poster boys. Back in the day, Dark Angels and Blood Angels were what everybody played. And then, like, somebody that was, a, you know, a little bit, they had a little bit of a wild side when they went to Space Wolves. Ultramarines weren't really, you know, if they were, why weren't they chapter or uh, Legion number one? They weren't. They were. No, I'm saying that's is that a later fluff edition that the uh, all that McCrag stuff and uh... yeah. So around the time that third edition 40k came out, um, which I think is probably when you may have started then started playing Battle for McCrag, and they were like, you know, Marnie is Calgar's the guy. Like, no, no, no. We we had Ragnar Blackmane, and we had these. Uh, the, so I don't think Ultramarines, somebody can, if they want to disagree or, or, or follow up in the comments there, but for a long time, Ultramarine were not the poster boys. It like, it, and it also seems to be like they're trying to make Ultramarines a thing and everyone's like, nah, the other ones are way more interesting. Well, you know what it was? So, so in, in, in the fluff of the Dark Angels, the Deathwing were the name of their Terminators. So the, ter and they were the first company. So, Every chapter, if you go by by the book, every chap every chapter's first company is Terminators because they're the veterans. But Dark Angels are the only ones who gave them like a thing. They were like the inner sort of the, the they wore they wore bone color armor, not because they were that was the old horse heresy color. That was the thing. Blood Angels gave their more salty guys the Death Company. Space Wolves had blood claws. They were the more aggressive young ones. Ultramarines never had names. I don't at the back in the day for special troops. So. Because of that, if you're making a game that says gene stealers against Terminators, there is no other choice than the Deathwing. And that's why those expansions came out back in the day extreme called Deathwing was one of them. Because that was the, if you wanted like the Terminators that had a thing, that had names that were cool, it was the Deathwing. And then later on, filthy chaos. this one, this edition, or the third edition rather, um, is when they went to Blood Angel Terminator. I don't really know why. I just, maybe they thought Vampires are big? Yeah, maybe. I, I think a lot of it is they were underrepresented because, because back in the old days Blood Angels were very popular. Everybody wanted Commander Dante in their army or Captain Tycho. All these cool characters and the vampire theme. I think it's kind of like fizzled away. So in a weird way, it's kind of cool because I don't have the models anymore, but if you look even in the the way the models were designed some people don't like this because it makes it harder to fit in, but I don't know if you can tell, but they have little blood droplets on them because they are blood angels models. I'm not saying you can't paint them as something else, but to the purists, I think some people might have shaved those off and not appreciated those being blood angel sculpts with blood marks on them and icon, various icons on there. But that's why they did it because they also made them all characters. These guys have names. You know, yeah. that's what they, that's why they did it. So could they re-release it again with a different one? Maybe I could see that because why not? Need some salamanders. Have... Maybe. Diversify. Yeah, you can, it could happen. I, I always like the idea of like sending the death watch in there. Like, yeah, it makes was, sense thematically for sure. Yeah. And my thought was um, the blood angels, they, they all die trying to do this. You know how many, you know how many missions across the world the Space Marines have failed in this? I'd like to say they're good. Yeah, and how do they only have a thousand people? They'd be wiped out. Right. You'd have to have like the blood drinkers or the successor chapters. Yeah. Like, oh, they're all gone. There's only a thousand 
Marines, you know. So yeah, I, I, I like to use Deathwing Terminators and I like to use mix and match with regular gene stealers and then the ones that come in the box. They both fit together nicely. You can easily tell because the ones that come in the box have a bunch of shit going on, like climbing up. And I know a lot of people covet the ones from this box for their gene stealers. They're cool. The difference. You know what's a good way to use them in 40K is um, if you, like, when you take biomorphs in 40K that are basically like war gear, and if you want to say these guys all have a certain thing, mm, use those instead. These guys all have uh, carapace armor. Uh, it means they have hard, high, better armor, but can't move as fast. You could use those as the, if you want. So, I mean, you could do that because they do look very different, but they also look cool mixed in too. And I think they used those in the, uh, when they released the Gene Stealer cult, that box set that had a bunch of stuff in it. I think they used a lot of the same molds. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. yeah they're cool. The Broodlord's a little undersized because he's made for space yeah. playability. Yeah, the, the new the newer release Broodloader is way cooler looking. Yeah, and the Broodlord in the in 40k is very good. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if he's I don't think he's as good in the game. I think in, in Space Log, he's like a junior, I'll call him a junior Broodlord. Yeah. Maybe a brood duke, if you yeah. would have one below Lord. But anyway, it's a great game. Great models. Um fun games and a great like all-encompassing board game there anything else um we should talk about kind of covered a lot extreme i know you're a fan anything you think we missed about discussion on this i don't think so okay well now it's time now it's time this is the this is episode 49 and the last game we're going to review in our first season of this show I'd like to think that whatever ratings we come up with won't be changed in a week, but maybe I'll be wrong because there's going to be a question next week. I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to say, what changed? Did you play more? Did you watch stuff? Did you read more? What changed this one being only a week away? It's kind of like when your codex comes out right before the new, you know, the new edition is going to come out. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to get it. You hope it's going to carry over nicely. So we'll see. Uh, I think your streams played a lot, but I might have played more. So, I'm, would you agree, stream? Or do you think you played more? I don't know. You can go first. How many have you played? How many games, roughly? I uh, I have no idea. I mean, it's 30. been spread out for so many years that I wouldn't know. Just yeah, same same here. Because I played from second edition. I'll go first. Uh, I'm going to give this game of Space Hulk. Four Slurpees, 4.0 Slurpees. I feel that's a good rating. I will play this game with you guys anytime you ever wanted to. I just feel that because of a little bit of the uh, action clunkiness, and again, that's a small one, that's like a 0.2, it's not a 0.5. But the, 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 the gamesmanship of it and, and the gene stealer drop off in what's in it for them, uh, you know, a little bit there, but that's okay. That, that's kind of part of the charm, but that is why it's not a 4.5. I, I really thought all day today, even throughout the videos that I watched, um, that 4.5 could be a reality for this one, but I looked at it next to my other 4.5 games, and I said, I want to play those games before this every time. So that's, that's why I actually was going to do 4.5. When you put it next to those other ones, it's like, fuck. No, I want to play Marvel Crisis Protocol right now, not this one. On its own, it could be a 4.5. But hey, like we're going to talk about next week, there's always bias. You're always rating against something else. Should this game be judged on its own or judging against anything else? I don't know. If it was the first game we reviewed, could it have been a 4.5? Maybe. But it wasn't because you fuckers kept pushing it back pushing it back pushing it back pushing the game back on your shelf Mike Maybe it is the finale season Mike, one this finale is, is underneath a bunch of other stuff in your home right now correct yeah it's in my closet yeah right but it, it's not on the top of any shelf in your closet correct right guaranteed how many long boxes on top of it how many how many <laughs> it's not even with my gw stuff Ooh. how many boxes of your random comics are on top of it yeah. Like you don't even know what's in there. Alpha Flight, what? 
power have pack. No, what? I have no rule on this shelf. What the fuck? Um, extreme. Let's go over to you for your rating of Slurp of Space Hulk. Not Slurp Hulk. Space that would be cool. It would be. Um, so you have mentioned multiple times that your rating with three being a game that you would play with us, and I really like that. That's why I keep going back to it. I think it's a great idea. So kudos to you. Um, this game, if one of you said, hey, do you want to play Space Hulk? Not only would I say yes, but I would be very excited about saying yes and want to play. Um, I think that it was a great game in second edition with a great rule set. And then when third edition came out, now we have the great components, great models, great everything else with it. Um, I I love this game. I would play it any time. I'm going to give it a five. Whoa! Oh my god! I got to pull something out from down below. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 As uh, Luke Allen says, I got to I got to grab a, a sizz or whatever he's been saying. He's saying I'm BT. I got I got to grab a sizz over here. Stream a five. Yeah, I, I thought about this Ooh. long and, and uh, I think that's the right score for me. Before we go any further, anyone watching that's watched all 49 episodes, let me ask you, just me to you right now, just between us, you knew I gave a five early on. Did you really think Extreme would be the second person to give a five? <laughs> Do you think Extreme would give anything a five? Anything a five. I mean, even like that to know that Biron and Mike haven't even reached their peak yet, or re they haven't haven't climaxed. Am I using that right? Haven't. Um, well, I don't like games, so that hurts me a little bit. Yeah, but I just like to hang out. I saw a five coming out of you way before extreme. Maybe on the recap we'll get there. Ooh, you got a five in your pocket? Maybe like five for later. Oh shit, that's a tease. Extreme, a five. There is no flaw in this game in your eyes. Um, is that what a five me means? Yeah. Tell, extreme, tell mm -hmm. me what your five means. For I, me I personally, say, yeah. for me personally, this would be like the best game that I could play. Like it checks all of my personal boxes. I see that's not a perfect game, but for me, it's the perfect. Game. Okay, that's fair. Well, that's kind of in a weird way. Like when I gave my five for Underworlds, all the way up there. I, to me, I kind of, I flip-flopped your rationale. I said, it's a perfect game, but I still want to play other games sometimes before it. This is kind of, and again, that's, I'm okay with that because it still means it's the best game that, you know, you've seen. Is that fair to say that of every game we've covered, I mean, a five should denote it's the best, right? Yeah. Okay. Biron, does that satisfy you? Yeah. You're, that's not a five. Quit the five doesn't have to be perfect. Quit trying to shit. Don't shit on somebody's five. That's a rule of the show now. <laughs> Don't shit on that someone's five. You can shit on their four, shit on their one. Don't shit on their five because the five means something special to that person. Agreed. I apologize. <laughs> uh, so a five from Extreme. That's a fantastic score. The best you can get. And uh, I'm shocked. I was thinking four. From you maybe i was thinking 4.5 4. just just because of the dice efficiency well yeah i was leaning towards 4.5 from him because he didn't at any point really say anything negative at any point whereas we said some things that were a little like well you didn't have a well i didn't see you go well you know you didn't go well there's no hemming or hawing there was, yeah extremes talking blah 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 and there was no well no, no, no. Well, we got. We have a word <laughs> count. It's the most. It's the most words he said for a game review. The most oh, for sure. Words. Yeah. Oh uh, no, Rivet Wars. I mean. Oh yeah, because you were the only one talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did like a like a direct plea to Ted Terra Nova, like please watch. Like, well, you can't you can't say please watch if he's not watching. It doesn't. I want to wear your skin as a suit. Right. <laughs> please give me the Russians. You were begging for those. Um. I guess, uh, Biron. Yeah, because I've played a game. And never, several uh, Panasonic 3 do You've never played, right, Mike? Never. Okay. And I, when I played, it was very bad experience. Right. But I knew there was something in there. Well, you paid money to play, Biron. I did. I paid $10 to play there. Yeah. Did you, by the way, can I ask, did you, did you leave right after? Or did you, was it a one time or was it a? a... It was a, we did one mission. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like a, it, 
it was fun and from the aspect that both me and Jose were looking at each other just rolling our eyes about well this, that was like when, when Extreme and I played a kill team or a combat patrol we both bailed and the dude freaked out on us for leaving yeah. even though we're like we're telling you we're leaving yeah already just left. Like, but thank you and there's two of us which means we don't fuck up the anything it's two yep. because it's still it's it an even cool. number he was free, like I think he might have even said in all my years of running games no one has ever quit on me we're like uh, that's got to be a lie. I got to go yeah. get some fucking a chicken. A Friday food. night night game, people are going to drop out. Right. Like, yeah, I, it had to have been a lie, but he, he was very he was very sad and upset. But, yeah. hmm. Beer on. So I'm not going to penalize this game for what I think it could be because I know that's not realistic. The game as it is, I'm going to, and basing it, I think of it as a board game. I'm going to give it a four. Great score. Uh, one of these one of these days soon, Mike and I are going to play at Grognar Games. I would I would like you to play like the first one or two missions, and then switch it up. You know, maybe play play both ways on the first one, and then it's in the second one, because I do think that extreme, and we agree on this because I think it's I don't want to say it's a fact, it's still an opinion, but I would bet you any person in the Space Hulk will agree that part of the allure to this game is the all right, now let, let, now let me try. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a big, that is a great point earlier extreme. Other games, you can say we can switch, but it doesn't have that same, now let me try. I mean, one, because it's miniatures, usually you want to use your own miniatures, but even like, I don't know, like Techno Bowl, we wouldn't swap sides, even though it's just car, like, we just wouldn't do that. This game's different. There's very much a- Both sides play like, completely differently. Yeah, you couldn't do it. Let me see if I can do it. Or you did it. I bet you can't do it. And I think watching those videos I watched today, the Wargamer Girl videos, it's like, oh, I could probably, like Mike said, I could pick up this game and play it with just a quick reference sheet. The, the, the level of uh, tactics as the Marine player of what to do, who to move, when to use command points, it's off the charts. Yeah, like, but just to play the game. is And, and under a, a timer. Yeah. It, it's one of the most... For one side, for one player, one of the most tactical games I've ever played in my life. For one player. Um, Michael. I'm a little torn because on one hand, I want to give it a three and a half because Mm -hmm. I've owned this game for eight years and have never shown an interest in it. But on the other hand, everything I have learned in these past two days doing research has made me want to play it and I'm glad I never got rid of it. Yeah. So based on, it, 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 like you said, the two modes of playing, for me personally, I feel that's, uh, again, a benefit because if I ever got Katie into it, mm-hmm. I know what Katie wants. She wants ease of play so she could be the Tyranid right. and have the disposable you know, things. In the re- Don't get me wrong. She will have a blast killing you yes like it's it's it is, a, it is a lot of fun to know that like i don't know i didn't do the math the math hammer but whatever it is 80 percent, 70 like going in when i when i get one square from you you're fucking dead and you know it oh yeah it's yeah you're, you're not winning thing. that yeah it's it's great you know sometimes it backfires but it almost always like you better hope that last one hits me motherfucker because i'm gonna be <laughs> out. there's a lot of fun that's why i said for like a uh a parent and their their kid. I think it's it'd be yeah that that's ideal. Now, um, I was thinking I, I wasn't going parent kid because I don't have kids, but I was like, you get that girlfriend that it's your birthday and she doesn't want to give you the blowjob, so she's going to give you the board game. This is the one for that. So would you ever say that if space you, Hulk she, better than a blowjob? Question I, I <laughs> easier than a blowjob. <laughs> if you can achieve the mission in six turns or less, I blow you right now. Ask like, them out. Well, that's what Byron and I are going to do. Yes. Yeah. Now it really makes you think. <laughs> and then we're going to switch. Yes. Here's the, here's the catch, though. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Where is it? Um, you got to find, here it is. When doing the blowjob, guess what's part of it? The timer. The timer. Well, that won't be a problem. For you. What about Biron? It's his mouth. <laughs> So great, but you're right. Great point, Mike. When I play with Heather, um, she played Gene Steelers most of the time because there wasn't a lot of, I think now she's, she's played more 40K with me. I think she actually will want to try 
um, Space Marines, but it, for a long time when we played, it was just, yeah, I just want to kill, kill everybody. And that was a great, um, like, I guess it was like, like a video game, whereas I'm going to play on hard and you're going to play on medium in a, in a sense. That's kind yeah. of what it felt like. So that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So I, again, I, I, after doing this, I will want to play it. So I'll give it a four. Ooh, highest score ever, I believe. For me? No, for the, the cumulative. Oh, cumulative. Yeah, probably. With, yeah. 4.25. Biron, if you could play the clip of the Save the Best for Last song. We don't want to get a digital millennium copyright infringement. Fine, you can just sing the <laughs> version of it, but make it so bad that we can't get sued over it. Um, I will tell you this much, and I mentioned it in my rating. Because I'm also va evaluating it. Is that a word, Mike? Valuating? Like giving it value? Yeah. You're evaluating. evaluating. Not, no, not evaluate. Valuate. Like to give it value. valuation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or validating. Oh, validate's probably better. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> Words. I'm, I'm placing this game uh, next to the other games that we've reviewed. So when I look at 4.5s, I put it underneath it. You know, when I look at the guy that reviews act wrestling figures, He's got this chart he's putting things on. And oh, does he do like S tier, A tier, B tier? He keeps, yeah, he keeps moving it. Like he puts one up there. It's like, well, it's on this level, but it's pushed to the edge of this level. He keeps like moving it. It's really, it's it's both annoying, but cool at the same time, if that makes sense. But um, this game I do that with. If this was the first five games out of the gate we reviewed, it might've got a 4.5. But because of the other four fives I've given, it's now four. So that's interesting that it actually, my point is, could have been higher. And maybe, who knows? Mike, if you didn't watch those, if you didn't watch those reviews today on YouTube, and if you didn't hear us talking about it, if we just said what we do sometimes, what are we talking about? What are we talking about again? Oh no, oh no. Somebody make a decision. Oh no, oh no. Because that happens. If that was this, it might be a fucking three from you. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't watch those YouTube videos, then it it hit me like, oh, yeah. Extreme and I, yeah, put it, on, we we put on Games Workshop red polos today, and we sold <laughs> you on this. Game. What games are you into, guys? Um, all of them except Gorka Morka. Cool. Let me show you Gorka Morka. <laughs> ah, I should have said all, all. Why did I say but? You know the answer. Just say everything. Linda Vore. So Space Hulk cumulative review is a or scores a four point two five. 4.25. That is the highest, right? It's got to be. It's got to be. I think it's tied, but I don't know. I can't like check it's right tied now. with Relic Blade, but guess what happens in a week? Who the fuck knows? Yeah. Who knows? So are we, we going to change the scores historically? Or it would be as a goof, on? though. They won't be historical changes, I don't think. Well, you, you, can't really ch you can't change the video. The video is the video. But... I would encourage people to watch that one to see what we've learned. It's okay to say what we've learned. So extreme, you can keep, I would, I hate to give more work to you extreme. I know you, when it comes to those lurk cast responsibilities, you have the most yeah. more worked. Um, you could put an adjusted column next to each one. You're going to be, I'm going to go through the steps to see how much work it really is for you. You're going to right click a max of four times a five for an extra cumulative. If you can handle it and you want to handle it, you can do it. Do it, highlight it, know. control C, control V to don't the right. Don't want to do it, that's okay too. No, I don't mind doing the work. I just don't, I think it'll make the spreadsheet look a little uglier because now we have extra. Oh, and, that, and the episode will end up lasting 72 well, hours? When it comes to data, it's not about being pretty. It's about the fucking raw. Facts. Facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. Extreme. <laughs> no one's going to see your... And hey, if you want to talk about how pretty the spreadsheet looks, I know you spent a lot of time on it. Giant, like, black bars over it isn't the most appealing <laughs> to the eye either. Giant, like, black, like, I don't want any of this. Or or the Todd score tumor sticking yeah, out. Right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it looks like, you know, like, how there's a state, like, there's a few states that we have that 
there's like a state and then it goes like a little loop like st louis like the top of minnesota where it goes a little bit into canada minnesota or and there's a story like some guys like this is my land i'm not going to sell my land and there's a story where we had to draw the line around it that's what our spreadsheet looks like right now todd is that little like a little nub he's the word he's the um missouri has one right like a little underneath yeah um Florida. I know the Minnesota one because I watched a documentary about kids that go to school and have to cross the Canadian border three times to get there. Hmm. Yeah. There's a good documentary series. Uh, I think it's on Netflix now called How States Got Their Shapes. And it goes through I've heard of that, yeah. state and when they have weird cutouts, why the ones out west are squares and why the ones east are all like weird shapes. Um, they go through each each episode as a state. So I like Florida because it looks like we're pissing on Cuba. George Carlin. You said that? Yeah. Now he's dead. Go figure. <laughs> Some Cubans got him. Yeah, watch what you say, motherfucker. Just saying. Well, we have communists within our midst that might get upset at that. The guy wearing blue? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe the guy wearing red. red. Just the guy wearing red probably is the one to look at. Just saying. <laughs> That's Mike. He just checked. So, uh, Great score. Let's see what happens in a week. Yes, extreme. In a week, the scores will be adjusted. History will be altered. The timeline has been changed. This is like the snap happened. Yeah, this is um, yeah. Who's who's who? Uh, what happened in, in in the meantime? I have another idea. Okay. What if what if next to your score I just put parentheses if it's adjusted and plus or minus? <coughs> okay. Will that screw up your addition? Yes. Yeah, your formulas are going to get messed up. Stream, go with the second column. You're not, you're not you need to do it. some pivot tables, my friend. Yeah, I maybe another tab. Maybe, maybe like a V lookup of some sort on there. Um, I think you should do an extra column for each of us. I also think there needs to be an extra totals column. And if you want to get really crazy, you could have. No, I guess that would be it. I was going to say to mix them. That doesn't make any sense. An adjusted score <laughs> column would be best. We need okay. to keep our scores segregated. I don't know, I today I started making my notes. And if you guys feel like sharing, if you know, but I have four right now, four games out of our 25-ish that are going to be adjusted. I know two of them, I bet. Is this spreadsheet? Is this a Google sheet? Yeah. I don't have the link. I'll paste in the link. paste it in the chat again. Something, right. Mike, something you should probably already know. You've known Extreme for a long time, probably like 15 years now. He does not share links. Like haphazardly, he like. I didn't know we ever shared this link. Right, this should be a link that our whole group gets. I get, I get somebody watching it. You can't see the inner workings. You know, no offense, you can't see that. But our group After the should, should already have the link in the chat. What? <laughs> you're gonna After get. The you're lucky because Johnny was calling me out for not having it updated. I had updated it during Todd talking. I put did. the link in the chat to prove it. We did, but. You know what you're never going to get, Mike? Is right access. <laughs> no, never. If you think... And that's smart. Those, mm-hmm. those black bars, you know, it's, I, want, I want to change... I know, what, I know what's in there. He's like, the fucking Brian, I hate that motherfucker. Oh, do you think there's fucking messages in yes. there? Yes. Do you think you, you highlight it? I'm going to, like, see what's in there. It's like the first websites. You hide all the, the fucking uh, keywords in there. Yeah, like you make the same color as the background. The background, right. You hide it under your mail, the folding into a paper airplane. Warhammer and Warhammer, spelled wrong for the idiots. I'm going to put 40K and 40,000. By the way, in the early eBay days, I used to always search Warhammer. Yeah. And I would get the best deals you've ever seen. I did that too, yeah. No bids. Man, I started this good thing, this whole army at a dollar. You know, one guy. (laughs) One guy. Whatever you're looking for, like Marauder miniatures, uh, you always put in the type type of Marauder too. And you know what a good one, Mike is, and you'll appreciate this one: the two different spellings of Bretonian. Oh yeah, two T's or two N's. Check them yeah. both. Yeah, check them both. Yep, it'll always be wrong. <laughs> so, all right. So, episode forty-nine of Slurpcast. Follow on social media at Slurpcast. We have a Facebook group as well called Slurpcast Discussion. Join that couple of questions to answer, we'll get you right in. As long as we prove you are not unworthy. Like, not a bot. 
I mean, a simple question. You know, what is the uh, airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? No, don't ask. You'll get the question. wrong people. Very simple question. You'll see that in there. Also, Zlurp Nation, there is a link to sign up. Fun fact, the short link was uh, blown up by MailChimp, who does our email database. That doesn't work anymore. He said, you should really use your own like Bitly. Okay, thank you. So I went and grabbed the direct link, grabbed a Bitly. I opened up 50 tabs for 50 episodes, 50 tabs, edit, 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 50 tabs, cut, cut, cut and paste, 50 tabs, save. That was fun. So the link here will be correct because Baron will copy and paste from the previous one. No matter what it says, he will copy and paste it. It can be the- filled with racial slurs and it's getting pasted it in. Mean. And I say, how'd you love that? He's like, well, why was it okay with the last episode? Because <laughs> I didn't even look at it. Right, fair point. Maybe that game required racial slurs and this one yep. doesn't. So if you like, slur- uh, so if you like Space Hulk, uh, you should comment below. If you don't like Space Hulk, but maybe we swayed you, we'd love to hear about that as well. Tell your friends to subscribe and big episode 50 is next week. Do not miss that one. Brought to you by McMurdy's. Ba da ba ba ba. I'm loathing it.